Okay, so welcome, good afternoon from my side. Uh, my name is um, Oliver Dürr. I'm a professor at University of Applied Sciences in Esslingen in the south of Germany. And uh, I met um, Abdi 2019 uh, at a conference of the American Accounting Association and I participated in his Monsoon Sim presentation and uh, I really fell in love with Monsoon Sim and therefore used it in 2019 and 20 in my classes. And I would like to show you how I integrate Monsoon Sim in my management accounting class. Okay, so I will give you some information about the, the class and the teaching concept and some examples how the students um, work with Monsoon Sim. Um, so the, the course I used Monsoon Sim for is a two European credit transfer point system class that means it's about 60 hours of workload for the students. It's a third year class in the bachelor's program in international industrial management. And we have 20 hours uh, contact time with the students, 40 hours of self-study for the students. And they already had classes in cost accounting and management accounting in the first and second year. Um, in the class, there were around, um, sorry, around uh, 20 to 30 students. And last semester, I did that class completely online. I used Cisco WebEx um, to run that class. So the, the goal of this management accounting class is the extension and application of management accounting skills. The students have to prepare data-based decisions so that refers to that decision facilitating function of management accounting and uh, they should develop data analytics skills using monsoon sim so that means that they know which data are relevant for which decision to take which connections exist between the data and what is what is the cause and what is the effect and the outcome um, in their data and that finally leads to the thing that Posing right questions has become really relevant in, in business today and management accountants, I think they have to pose the right questions. And that's um, quite easy to teach with Monsoon Sim. Um, so as I said, I use Monsoon Sim in that class to create dynamic data. That means um, data that changes with the decisions the students take. Um, I play it in teams of five students. And I did not use all the, the, the modules, all the departments up the showed us. I just had general financial procurement, retail, marketing, forecast, wholesale, B2B, and e-commerce. And I did run each round 60 seconds. And I played four sessions. So I did not play that game once, all the, the complete rounds. So I took four different sessions. Um, and as a second tool, I use Tableau Prep and Tableau Desktop to analyze the data um, that's free with an academic license. Also, the students can download um, Tableau for their own um, laptops at home. So that's also free for them for one year. And they use these tools to prepare the data, analyze the data, and um, to also present the data using Tableau Dashboard. And I did not teach them how to use Tableau. Um, I just um, made them or made them access to some video tutorials so they can self-study using Tableau. So I did not teach Tableau at all to them. Okay, so the um, Concept is then I have two introductory lectures to the class. So one is just about organizational information, how they have to set up the teams, how they can access Monsoon Sim and so on. And the second lecture is on data analytics, data presentation, balance scorecard, and how to pose right questions. Um, and I do not have a detailed introduction to Monsoon Sim. I think also that is not nece really necessary to teach how to use Monsoon Sim. I just have two slides in my first lecture. 
So that's the game code, how, how they, have, they have to access Monsoon Sim and some general information so about the products, about the, the stores, about what are warehouses, how much suppliers they have and so on. But it's just two slides and then I let them play the game. So I have some test games so that they can, can explore Monsoon Sim, look around, what can I take um, as a decision. Um, so that's here three times a test game I did with them. And also I gave them the possibility to participate in, in club games. So they had the Sunday night, Monday night club games and they could use these club games to become familiar with Monsoon Sim. So that was really very nice with Monsoon Sim that you do not have to teach them five hours how to use it. It's really very intuitive um, as, a, as a learner. Uh, and then, as I said, I have four sessions. So in each session, I play with the students 25 to 50 rounds of Monsoon Sim. Um, and if the, after each session, I stop the game. And then students have two weeks time to collect the data from Monsoon Sim, to prepare the data, to analyze the data, and to develop a data story and prepare a dashboard that they have to present to me. And each group member has to present a part of their company. So that's the way I, um, I can handle the, the issue that it's a group activity and uh, everybody has to participate because everybody of the group has to present something of the data and the data story. Okay, so here I um, give you my semester plan of last semester. I started um, end of April and it went through end of July. Um, so you see the, um, the red uh, dates are contact time dates and the, the blue ones were coaching time where I was available via WebEx to answer questions and so on. Um, and after each round, they had coaching time and have them present their dashboard and their data story to me. Okay, so the skills. So I think it's a good combination of the dynamic data created by Monsoon Sim, data analytics with Tableau and a gamification in learning. So students like very much to, to learn by playing a game and that's here in Monsoon Sim. Um, they like it very much. It's a, it's a very easy access just with their browser. It's very easy to learn and understand. They do not have to read 500 pages of, of a book to understand Monsoon Sim. They just log in and, and try out. It's a very stable game environment. So I never had some issues with Monsoon Sim and it's very easy to access the data. Um, in version eight, there are analytics incorporated in Monsoon Sim. Last semester, I did use the old version and you can just download all the data as a CSV file. Um, the skills they acquired um, is that they, they become a feeling of what decisions are the most relevant decisions to take and what are decisions that are not that relevant. And then they ask themselves, which data do I need to take a very well-grounded decision? <laughs> Um, so they also learn what factors really drive the performance of their company. What is really relevant, for example, if net profit is the target, what drives net profit? What KPIs are relevant for net profit? And um, the basic skill also here is that they learn what are the roots and what are the effects, what are the outcomes? And they use Tableau to visualize these roots and effects um, in a balanced scorecard. Okay, so in the chat there's a question about balanced scorecard. I will show that to you in a moment, how they did that. Um, sorry, going back. Um, and they have to tell a, a database story and sell it to, to their CEO. So I'm playing a little bit the, the, um, the board and they have to tell me 
their strategy using these data and then the dashboards. Okay, the grading I did was based on the presentations. So um, each presentation date, each group had 10 minutes and um, the grading was based on the structure of the presentation, the data story and the decisions if they are based on the data and the game performance were bonus points. So um, a team that performed very well in the game had additional points for the grading. Okay, so here are uh, some, some of the examples of the students' um, presentations and slides. So here, for example, they looked at outliers. So you, in the graph, you see um, the, the orange curve, that's net profit. And here they look for outliers, so days, um, for example, day 67, 73, days with, with negative profit. And then they digged deeper into the data, analyzing what was the cause of that negative net profit. So was it a stock out or was it a negative B2B margin, a bad deal they, they agreed to? And also they looked at extraordinary high profit, day 68, day 77, and they um, digged into what was the cause of that extraordinary high profit. And um, so that, that's an example for outliers. Then here is an example about price strategy. Um, so here, so I have to uh, be sorry, some words are in German because they did that in German. Uh, so you see here the red one is the price in Berlin for melon juice. So that's the way they change their prices over time. The blue line is the average price of the competitors. And the, the light blue is the average sales over that time period. And you see here the price decrease over time, the red line decreases, and what was the effect on their average sales. Um, and what they did not discuss at that point was, is it a price effect or a volume effect? So here they could also integrate the number of, um, fruit juices they sell instead of only the, the average sales volume. Then here they have um, cost of goods, goods management. Um, here you see for apple, melon and orange juice the cost of goods sold over time and you see that decreased and the students dig into why that price over time decreased, what was their strategy, how they behaved and also here one group, you see that Excel file, they developed a tool to, um, to the supplier choice. So I allowed three suppliers, VFG1, VFG2, and Vendor X. And um, depending on the, the volume they want to buy, they developed that tool that shows them what is the best supplier, the cheapest supplier to, um, to make the deal with. Um, so here is then also an example of B2B management. Um, in B2B, you have to bid for the deals. And what you see in a uh, left upper um, jar is on red, that's the cost of goods, average cost of goods sold. The blue one is the own price, the students bid. And the yellow is the winning or losing bid of the competitor. Uh, and you see here that from the ninth bid on, they are quite below the competitors before they were very close to them. So it seems that there is some room that they could bid a little bit higher and still win um, the bid. Um, on the um, bottom, you see the difference of lost bids per competitor. So AADV, DDFFHH were the other companies. And you see here the difference to the other bidders on average. And on the right corner, you see margins. So the, um, the blue ones are B2B margin, the orange is retail margin, and the size is the volume of the deal. And you see how that developed over time. Um, were the margins stable or did the margins decrease? Uh, okay, and then 
your uh, store management that's also very important in monsoon sim um, and here one group thought about stock out events uh, very bad events because you do not have something in the store to sell and the blue one are the the number of stock outs and you see that the number of stock outs here decreased over time um, and the, the green one are the sales volume um, and you could combine that dashboard for example with floor space management um, for which star I should increase the, the space for which star I should decrease it and also with supplier reliability because in monsoon sim not all suppliers are equally reliable so some suppliers deliver on time some suppliers deliver late and you could combine these issues here of stock out this supplier reliability okay and then i think finally here are an example of a balanced scorecard uh, i again have to apologize it's in german so um, on the left it's finance customers processes and um, potentials and uh, the, the green arrows are positive effects and the red one are negative um, relating to costs and the, the overall goal here is maximization of net profit because that was the target I gave to them and then you can see here um, increasing sales will increase net profit increasing their market share will increase sales maximizing um, supplier reliability will lead to um, a low number of stock outs and that will increase market share and so on um, so that's how they developed um, that balanced core card and here is a second example of such a balanced core card it's a very unusual way to present it because it's not these four um, parts of the the standard balanced core card but what the goal is is that they think about what is the the cause and what is the outcome and how that is connected and that's the the thing i wanted them to learn what is really the, the basic decision and what's its impact on finally net profit okay um final slide here um is on lessons learned so um the students very much liked monsoon sim in the beginning they had some problems coordinating their team that's also something they learned that they have to coordinate decisions and during the test games they very often had stock outs and they learned how to deal with these coordination issues during the game um, second the students knew what a balanced scorecard is but they never really thought about causes and effects and that's the main thing in that balanced scorecard so they needed some time to think about what is the cause and what is an effect but they had a substantial learning effect understanding and applying a balanced scorecard and finally there was very high student engagement they not really complained about the, the time they spent learning to blow doing dashboards, doing presentations. Um, so there was very high engagement with Monsoon Sim and also with Tableau and doing dashboards. So students like games, they like gamification and that's a very, very positive asset here also of Monsoon Sim. Okay, then um, I'm open to questions maybe i check the chat uh, okay um, alternative perspective on balanced scorecard yes um, not only for strategic issues but also for um, looking at causes and effects i think that's also what is really important in a balanced scorecard what is the, the outcome i want to achieve and what decisions do i have to take to achieve these outcomes I have a question rather than typing out. Can I just ask over the platform?
can can you hear me, Professor Oliver? Yes, I can hear you. Right. So, can, a few questions. When you when you mentioned round, you play the game with round twenty six to sixteen. What does it mean? Um, so, um, so totally, I set up the game with one hundred fifty days. But I did not play these 150 days at one date. I split it up. So I did session one um, about, I think, 25 days. Um, so maybe let, let's go back and let's show me the, the, the semester plan. So I did not play these 150 rounds at once. So I, in the, the 6th of May, I played just 25 rounds. 25 days in Monsoon Sim, then I stopped the game and let them collect the data and analyze the data. And then three weeks later, we restarted 27th of May and played on. And in the meantime, they had time to create dashboards, think about their strategy, and then maybe change their strategy and change their decisions to react to the other groups. So the round means how many days they are running. Okay, yes. so yes, round to six. when you come to round 26 to 60, it basically built on what you have done in round 1 to 25. So it's not something uh, fresh from beginning. No, no, so it's, it's the same game, but I stopped the game from time to time. But it's the same game that goes on. So on day 26, you start with all the decisions you, you took on day 1 to 25. Okay. So I just stopped it in Monsoon Sim and then I let, let run the game once again. All right. I'm interested in your presentation of dashboard. What, what students are presenting on that dashboard? Um, so, so I showed you some examples of their dashboards. So oh. basically they started with, um, with net profit and were analyzing um, how the daily net profit developed. So as I showed you, are there some negative yeah. days? And then they ask, hey, why was there a negative profit on that day? What happened that day? And then they looked about uh, supplier reliability, stock outs, and so on. And okay. if I found an answer, for example, it was stock out because supplier was unreliable, then they take new decisions, maybe order, three days earlier or change the supplier so that no stock out will happen and there will no negative profit in the future. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm moving towards the balance scorecard. So uh, you have presented us a few sample of balance scorecard. So what you have looking for is not the true sense of balance scorecard is any format that student coming about. So you're not looking at internal growth or, you know, the fourth perspective of balance scorecard? Yeah, so these four perspectives are the, the standard perspectives um, that you find in the, in the, in the original textbook. Um, so the, the internal and, and learning and growth perspective would here be the the last perspective that's called potentials, potentiale. Uh, okay. So, so some, sometimes it's named a little bit different, um, but, but I think Kaplan and Norton also mentioned that's one possibility how to, to, to look at these four perspectives. You could also use five perspectives or only three. Yeah. Uh, so here it's the, the fourth one is potentials, they call it. Uh, All right. Uh, do you tie up the whole learning module with assessment? Uh, so, sorry? Do you tie up the whole module with assessment? Like, does it count into their credit exam or something like that? Um, so I'm not sure if I, if I did get the question right. So, so they, yep. for the grading, they only do the presentations. Okay. So the presentation will get marks and they have to, so they sort of motivated to do a better job in the whole game so that they can present something sensible and strategy or something like that. So marks are given for their presentation. 
Um, yeah, so, so here the, the, the basic grading is on the presentation. So if they um, are good at analyzing the data, telling a data story, and then um, taking decisions based on the data. And the motivation for the monsoon sim game is if they perform well in the monsoon sim, they get additional points. And for each presentation, they do not get a mark, they get points. And I add up all these points. And in the end, the, the sum of the points results in a, in a mark. Okay. And if you, if, you, if you perform very well in monsoon sim, you get a better grade because you get bonus points. Right, all right. Yeah, thank you. I better leave some time for others uh, participants to ask. If there's no questions, I'd like to ask, is there any challenges during this COVID-19 time in terms of technology for the student to play the game at home or, you know, how to run it during this time? Um, so, so the students managed that very well. So most of the students, or all of the students had access to a, to a computer um, at home. Um, so that was not, not a problem for them. And um, sometimes it even worked better than in class because in, in class in, in, um, at the university, um, all the students used uh, the, the computers there and they all were using them um, at the same time and that created some problems sometimes with the, um, with the network infrastructure and uh, during COVID when they were at home, it was I think even easier. Uh, they had some issues coordinating themselves, but, but that worked also very well. Uh. Okay, and I believe this is cloud-based, so there is no problem whether it's a PC or Mac. Yes, that, that's, that was no issue. So some of them had Mac, some of them had, had PC you know, running window. So for Monsoon Sim, it's browser-based. And um, I think also for Tableau, there is also a Mac download. So there was okay. no issue. Okay, thank you. Uh, how are students then studying other areas or topics when they are more excited in doing? Okay, so um, the students had the management accounting class one year before where they um, learned basic concepts in management accounting and uh, yes, so during the game they were really excited about Monsoon Sim, but um, that, that was really only the time when they played the game. And if you play 50 rounds, 60 seconds each day, so it's, it's roughly one hour they play the game and the rest of the time they, they really use the data and try to analyze the data and try to take well-grounded decisions. Yeah? Um, and, and how these decisions will affect their cash, how these decisions will affect their net profit and the competitors. So it was really only the, 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 the game playing time um, where they were dedicated to Monsoon Sim. But when the game stopped after these rounds, I, I said, and they were really in, in balance scorecard, in KPIs and um, data analytics. So that was not a problem. It, it's limited to the gameplay. Okay. Yeah, so, so there's another question um, concerning the management accounting concepts. So, so um, I do the monsoon sim in the third year of the bachelor's program. So they're very close to um, finishing their, their bachelor's degree. So they had all the classes in, in marketing, in finance, in accounting before. Um, so there's not really a lot that I teach them. I teach them something about data analytics and how to present data. Um, and I also teach them something about balance scorecard and, and uh, KPIs. But there are no lessons 
between between the games or between playing the games. Yeah? Um, so sometimes if I see something, what they do in the game, then I show that issue maybe to everybody um, and we talk about that. Why is it happening that there is a stock out all the time or something like that? But um, there's not really um, uh, a teaching of additional concepts, only at the beginning of the lecture, data analytics, data presentation, DSC, and KPIs. All right, any other question from the floor? Um... Yeah, that, that was referring to the management content. Yeah, so the, that's the same question by um, Betty Jane Martinez. So um, in the second year, they have a four hour lecture about management accounting with me. And there is cover topics like budgeting, cost volume profit analysis, performance evaluation, transfer pricing, um, production planning, and so on. And here, one year later, they have to apply these concepts. Also, the BSC is covered in that second year class. Um, so if it would be a standalone class and, and uh, you have to teach all these concepts, then it will be much more complicated. But it's, it's a on top class on a standard basic management accounting concept class. How many percent of the class is spent for one Zoom Sim game? Um, so 150 rounds, that's 150 minutes, that's two and a half hours of the 60 hours workload. So that's roughly 5% of the time is spent playing the game. So it's not, not that much really playing the game. They spend a lot more time analyzing the data and, and then discussing what decisions do I take based on the data and how that affects then the next rounds played in Monsoon Sim. Yeah? So I think what is of value is that I stop the game. If I would just let run the game 150 rounds, then I would have to do that more often that they can learn something. But I decided to stop the game after some rounds and then they reflect the decisions they did, analyze the data and take maybe different decisions next time. Uh, Professor Oliver, um, the way that you actually practice monsoon sim is very different from uh, a lot of universities in Asia. Um, Asia will actually give the student many rounds of 150s uh, for them to practice and familiarize. So uh, did you actually think of uh, moving towards that option so that the student have more chance to deal with the real life problem? Um, because they may make a wrong strategy in the first 150 rounds or maybe uh, in between 150 rounds and they would like to, uh, you know, take another strategy in the next one. Do you think of uh, moving them towards like giving them more time since it's only 5% out of the time that you allocated? Do you think of allocating more for them in the future? Um... I, I did not think about that before. So uh, I was quite happy with with the time they had for that. And they they already did that. So after maybe around 60, they said, oh no, our strategy was wrong. We will switch and change our bidding behavior or we will change suppliers for round 61 to 150. So letting them play more than one game is an option. I have to consider this, but um, but the way it is now, I can focus on on other topics. So playing the game is um, the, the students like very much, but it's not the main focus that they play the game. So for me, it's the data analytics part. So therefore, I'm quite happy today with the five percent playing the game and ninety five analyzing that dynamic data that is created by Monsoon I totally appreciate that. Uh, and there's another question coming from Betty. The student enroll this class as an additional requirement or an elective subject? Uh, uh, can, you can you take this question? Uh, it's a mandatory class at the moment. So okay. it's not an elective, they have to take that class. 
Okay, it's mandatory, Betty. So hope that answers your question. And how about topics related to capital budgeting? That's from uh, Anthony. Um, so I did not uh, use that uh, last semester. Um, I think therefore you would have to turn on um, more modules like production, um, where especially then you have to buy machines and so on. Uh, you could incorporate that. I did not do that because I wanted to um, to keep the complexity um, handleable, handleable. So, so you could run monsoon sim with the complete complexity, but I I thought okay, I restrict the modules a little bit for the students to make it easier. Okay, totally sensible. Thank you very much. Um, any more questions from the floor? So, Professor Oliver, anything else you want to uh, word of wisdom for the rest of these uh, educators? I think m many of these are from educators. Um, they are from different universities. Uh, some are from Philippines, I think, Australia, and uh, some other country, including Malaysia. So, uh, is there some advice you want to give it to them? Because many of them are actually, you know, sort of uh, trying to think a way of how to uh, get the ball rolling. I think there's, 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 there's quite a lot of challenges for some of them because they are quite handful, number one. And number two is that they might have some, what we call concern over the uh, effectiveness of implementing the system. Uh, will there be some sort of, uh, you know, uh, complaints and things like that from the students? Maybe you can shed some lights on that and how do you take the initiative and uh, how that works out in your environment? Okay, so, so the second question was, if, they, if the students had some, some problems and issues and complaints? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> no, not really. So, um, so with, the, with the technical side, there was no issue. Everybody all the time had access to Monsoon Sim. There was no problem at all. Um, so, also no complaint about monsoon sim. The students liked it, yeah. So it was great for them to play it. Um, and, and the first question was advice. Yeah, well, I mean, how do you initiate the monsoon sim in your university? Because many of the other universities may have uh, to go through some approval level within okay. universities. And how do you actually expedite that process? Okay, um, Paul. That, that was, hmm, at my university, that was quite easy because I'm the Dean of Studies. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you make the call, basically. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That, uh, I had to, to, to convince the Dean, um, uh, however, and um, so, so because it's, it's something, I would call it, Simulation is not new, but you have that browser access. The students can access that from home. That's that's a very positive asset during COVID-19 that you can access with your smartphone, with your tablet. Everywhere you are, you as a student, you can access Monsoon Sim and you need not to be at the university. And that's something that's that was a very positive aspect. Uh, I had other colleagues and they had um, special software for their classes and huge problems using that software for the students from, from home because they had not university access. So that's, that's a very positive asset for Monsoon Sim. It's very, very easy accessible. Um, okay, there's a new question coming up for you. Uh, uh, are using the SEP software as well as in class? Um, so not me. Um, so, so a colleague of me is, is using SAP. Um, I think we are also SAP Star Alliance partner or something like that. They do not use that uh, ERP SIM, but they use SAP for, for process management um, and, and apply and use SAP. Not me, but colleague does it. All right, okay, I'm sure that answered the question. And there's another um, question from Violeta. Our presentation was brilliant. Uh, that is definitely, uh, I must say yes, for sure. 
Hi, Professor Oliver. Do you buy it as a uh, per head subscriptions or institution package? Um, yeah, per um, per learner subscription. So students are willing to pay. So I assume it's going to be affordable kind of price. Um, it's not the students that pay. We pay as a university for the students. Oh, okay. All right. So it depends on the on the number of learners, I think. Yeah. So um, at the moment, it's it's these twenty to thirty students, and then that's really really affordable, I think. Maybe for the students, or, or we as a university pay for them. Um, I'm in talks with some colleagues at my university and other bachelor programs. Maybe they will also use it, and then maybe the time comes to switch to a, a institution license. But I think it depends on the number of learners. Okay, thank you. Okay, Donald, any question from your end? Uh, the contact. Uh and professor yeah. oliver that is fantastic brilliant and thank you very much for your sharing